uh, clearly had some some ice on it, uh, potentially getting broken. When did it happen? What what was the update there? Yeah, it was compromised in like the first or second round. I threw like a calf kick and it landed on his knee, and I felt it just explode right away. So it's probably broken. I have to get an X-ray when I get back. But you know, I was fighting for something bigger than myself tonight. I was fighting for all the people that keep us free here in America, first responders, law enforcement, military. So this was something bigger than myself. I wasn't going to quit on them. Yeah, I got clipped in the second round, but I'm going to keep fighting and keep coming forward. I'm unbreakable. You can't stop me. Yeah. I was going to ask you, I mean, what is the emotion like right now? Obviously, you came up short. You didn't get the result you wanted. But another incredibly you know, close fight, another great fight against a, a top individual that I'm sure you'd be proud of the performance. So what's, what's the feeling right now? No, I'm definitely not proud of my performance. I should have won that. It was, it was laser thin again. I honestly thought I had it 3-2. And it was very close. He clipped me. I clipped him a couple of times. Whatever media reporter in here to say I went for 11 takedowns and had un unsuccessful attempts, fake news. You guys do real journalism. That's why you guys aren't journalists. You don't have journalism degrees because you put this fake news out. I obviously took him down. So I broke that stat. So you can't ever hype him up anymore and say he's never been taken down because I took him down. So, you know, I think we have unfinished business. I'll go five more rounds out in the parking lot right now. And I'm serious about that. I will see him again. I'm not done with him. I'll fight whoever it takes to get back there. I think the most logical step is the heated rival with me and my old roommate, Street Judas Mosfidal, you know? He should probably pull out of that fight with Leon Scott, and we should just run it, you know? Let's run it in the first quarter of the first part of the year, and let's do it, man. That's, that's a heated rivalry, man. He talks so much shit in the media and said so many things about me. Look at what happened when he fought Marty. He got dusted. I mean, if he fought me, I, he would get dusted even worse, and it wouldn't be competitive. So I just want to hold these people accountable for the way they run their mouth in the media, and it makes sense. And if he goes ahead with that Leon Scott fight, then Hunter Campbell, I just pray to you, please, God, don't cut him after that third loss in a row. Save him around and let me be the one that ends his career. So you still fight him even if he comes up short in that one? Yeah, just because it's such a personal rivalry. He said so many things about me in, in the media. He said I was a fragile guy. The guy's the most fragile guy on the roster. Look, is he awake yet? I mean, dude, he got dusted, dude. Unconscious, dude. You'll never see me in the octagon like that. And I'm getting better every single day. You haven't seen the last of me. I'm going to get that UFC title. I don't care who I have to go through, what I have to do. I know I'm the best fighter in the world, and I know I'm going to be able to reclaim I'm going to be able to claim that gold someday. Yeah. I know you mentioned thinking you had three rounds of two. I imagine that would be three, four, and five. So I did just want to ask you about one and two. It seemed like you started maybe a little slower, maybe a little less volume. Was that by design, or was that just something that kind of played out in, in the opening two rounds? Yeah, I came out a little sluggish. Uh, just, you know, didn't get to my volume, didn't get to my pace like I normally do. I was trying to see what he was working with and what he was going to come at me with. and. And, uh, but, you know, I still thought I was right there. I didn't, I didn't think that he clearly won one or two. I mean, maybe two because he clipped me, but one was very close. I don't know how you could just outright give it to him. So it was a very close fight. Whatever judge, judge put it, 49-46 is out of their fucking mind. Yeah. And obviously, it's been a very heated rivalry, but it looked like you did have a couple of words of respect at the end of the fight. I'm just curious if you could share kind of what the conversation was. I can't respect a guy like that. I mean, go look on YouTube. The guy dissected everything that, you know, he cheats on and, and everything. And you see those injection marks all over his stomach. The guy's not a clean fighter. I'm a clean fighter. I'm raw American steel and twisted sex appeal. And, and I did this the hard way. I'm a kid from Springfield, Thurston, Oregon. And look at me. I just sold out, the, or I just put the, sold out Madison Square Garden, fourth highest gate in the company's history. The pay-per-view numbers are astronomical. Take one guess who did all that. That's me. I'm the one that sold this event. I'm the one that put all this asses in the seat. Whether you love me or hate me, you came to watch me tonight, and that's not debatable. That's right, so last thing for me. Uh, clearly, you want to see him again. Um, do you think you know a fight with Masvidal is enough to do that? Do you think there might be some more work? Where do you think the path is for Colby Covington from here? Yeah, I think a, a fight with Masvidal gets me right there. You, you know, he was just a top contender before he got beat two times in a row. So you guys put a lot of hype on him that, you know, he was just – this superstar and he's unbeatable and these crazy knockouts and he's just no one can beat him so you know that that fight needs to happen man he talks so much shit you know and ran his mouth so much and just the personal rivalry and, the, and the, just the, the heat on that fight there's there's not a lot the fight like that in the ufc the way the ufc can sell that so i'm just begging hunter campbell i'm begging dana white please let it happen whether he pulls out of the leon scott fight 
We could do it the first quarter of next year. We could do it in Miami, man. Let's go to Miami. You know, we got the best governor in the world, Ronnie D, Ronnie DeSantis. And let's run it in Miami, man. Let's see who's the king. I know I'm the king of Miami, so if he wants to come step up, you know, I want to punch him in the face for his ex-wife, Maritza. I know she wants to hit him in the face, so, you know, he's got some alimony to pay in the meantime, and, you know, he's a dirtbag, so let me finish that guy. Colby, over here. Uh, to speak to that uh, takedown record that you're just talking about, Daniel Cormier actually said that's two when you took him down. So it's like, I would assume you would agree with that. A hundred percent. It was obviously a takedown. He was on his hands and knees. You know, I came around to the back. I had the body lock. I, I obviously got the two point takedown. So whatever journalist is in the is in the crowd saying that it was unsuccessful on every attempt is obviously not a journalist. There, you know, you need to go report on something else because you, you know nothing about MMA. Your eyes are blind, and you should probably get him checked. Hey, Kobe, right here. Um, didn't go your way, but the crowd in New York, quite a few fans for you. Can just put into words what it's like to come out to Madison Square Garden and get that kind of reception. It was incredible, you know. I said all week about, you know, all the people that have headlined this place, Muhammad Ali, Rolling Stones, Hulkamania, you know, and now Kobe Covington. So to have a sold-out arena like that and just so many of my close friends that came, you know, Candace Owens, Jack Owak, Bang Energy, uh, you know, and well came out to support me from Miami, you know, famous Spanish rapper. So it was incredible, man. It's just, it was, it was electric in there. You know, you could hear the, the people, you know, in the crowd going crazy the whole fight. So it was amazing. I'm just a kid from a small town in Thurston, Oregon. No one makes it out of that town and goes big. So for me to make it out of that town and, and be where I'm at, I'm undeniable. You guys can say whatever you want in the, in the media. I'm undeniable. There's no doubt I'm a star in this company. I'm one of the biggest draws if not a top two or three big draw in this company. So I got unfinished business and, and I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna get back to the grindstone as soon as this foot's healed up. And you haven't seen the last of me, I can promise you that. Looking at the schedule and depending on what may or may not happen with your old buddy, are you open to possibly still coaching the Ultimate Fighter against him if they said, hey, the schedule lines up for both of you? Absolutely, I think that would be an honor. And what better way to have a heated rivalry like that on the Ultimate Fighter, so I think it sells the show pretty self-explanatory in itself, and you know, it'd be an honor to be a coach. I remember growing up watching the show, and I was a big fan of it. You know, my good friend and Uncle Chael, good buddy, you know, coached the show, so two kids from Oregon, Oregon gangsters, and it'd be an honor to be able to do that, and you know, I love putting on good business for the UFC, so I'd love to coach it and, and give the people and the fans what they want. For the record, do you just like the color green, or is it because you got paid? <laughs> it's a little bit of both, you know? But, you know, I do like green. It's, it's nice when it goes in the bank account. Thank you. Well, um, to go back to tough there, I mean, is that something in terms of timing that you'd want to do? Because it takes a while to film that show to air it, and I feel like over the past few years, you have lost a lot of the you know, opportunities in terms of time off and stuff. Is that something that would come into play if that opportunity came around, not wanting to sit out for a long time again? Yeah, you know, there's two sides of the spectrum. I don't want to sit out and keep wasting the prime of my career. I feel like I'm hitting my stride and I'm getting better every day. You know, <clears throat> I got new good coaches and Daniel Valverde, Cesar Carnero, Jonathan Lopez, Charlie Weiss. These guys are pushing me every single day. So I still keep seeing leaps and bounds and improvements in my game. And I know the best me and my full potential hasn't came yet. So the biggest thing is I'm a company man. I love putting on good shows for the UFC and, and selling, you know, tickets and, and shows and pay-per-views and everything. So if that's what the UFC wants, I'd love to deliver it for them and, and give them a good show and, and give the fans what they want, man. That show's been boring, man. There's there's no animosity. There's no heated rivalries. It's just guys are trying to fake these these dramas and, and these storylines. So let's get a real storyline going with a guy I used to beat up every day in the living room and let's sell this fight, man. The guy talked reckless. How you? Where's the street care going to be if he, he ducks me his whole career? Because that's what he just did. Ever since I beat Woodley, he was sitting out. He didn't want to fight me, and there's a reason why. So if he doesn't come out and fight me, he lost all his street cred, and he's a bitch. And I guess if you do have a broken foot, that could you know fit the time frame in terms of recovery, right? You could do the show while you heal up. Yeah, we could do the show while I heal up. I, I don't anticipate it being more than four weeks, six weeks at most to, to heal it. So. I think the first quarter of next year is a good time for me to come back and fight, and uh, hopefully it lines up for when he wants to fight again. 
And lastly for me, you said at media day in terms of the first fight, you didn't feel like your coaches at the time were giving you the correct advice between rounds. You mentioned the breathing thing and all that. Um, how do you feel the feedback was and the directive you got tonight differed? Oh man, it was a completely different uh, game plan, different coaching, and they just calmed me down, helped me to breathe, you know, told me to keep my hands up. A couple of times I started getting a little reckless again and dropping my hands and smiling and, and deviating from, you know, the game plan, the strategy, but they calmed me down. Cesar Carnero told me, hey, calm down, hands up. Daniel Valverde was reminding me, hands up, hands up. Let's, let's, let's not, you know, start fighting emotional. Let's fight smart and let's get our hand raised. You know, you're, you're clipping him and you're catching him too, so just be fast. You know, a couple of times in the fight, I was just using too much energy. I was trying to knock him out. I wanted to knock him out so bad, and I was swinging everything I had, but that wasn't working. When I was catching him, it was when I was being speed and, and timing and accurate and uh, not loading up on my shots, just touching him and going back in. So, you know, all the credit to, you know, Cesar Carnero, Daniel Valverde, Jonathan Lopez, and Charlie Weiss. They had me at my best tonight. Hey, Chaos. Another fighter that you have beef with is Dustin Poirier. Obviously, he's fighting for the lightweight championship. You want to fight this guy. Can you ever see yourself going down to 155, or do you see yourself fighting him at 170? He would come up. Yeah, you know, I, I remember, you know, that Louisiana Swamp Trash, Dustin Poirier. We used to step on the scale at our old gym all the time, and he went bigger than me. I, I was like 182, he'd be like 185, 188. So. He's a bigger guy than me. I, I'm not scared to fight, you know, guys in my way. He's obviously scared to fight guys his way. He has to cut all this weight to feel like he has an advantage over guys. So he's another guy that it makes sense for that fight. He talks so reckless in the media. How are these guys not going to be held accountable? He said, hey, it's on site. When I see Colby, it's on site. Dustin, name the site. Let's do it, man. Bring that little Jezebel of a wife. Bring that little kid you use as a prop. And let's get this going, man. I'm holding people accountable in the UFC. They're not going to be able to talk reckless and not be able to step in the cage. And if he doesn't want to fight, he loses his street cred too, and he's nothing more than Louisiana swamp trash. So not at 155? No, I don't feel like depleting myself and, and going through that struggle. You know, it's not a hard cut for me at 70. It's, it's really easy, but we could do something in the middle, 162 maybe, but I don't feel like cutting all that weight. You know, I, I'd rather fight in my natural weight class and show the world that you don't need to cut weight to be the best in the world. You just gotta show up and fight and prove that you're the best. Kobe, when uh, Kamara was out here earlier, he referred to you, he sort of compared you to being the Frazier to his RD. And I'm sure like some people would take that as a compliment, but I can imagine you thinking that's not a compliment. Can you react to that statement, please? Yeah, it's definitely not a compliment, you know. <laughs> he's a cheating coward, you know, I have no respect for that guy, you know. He's, He's obviously a cheater. He's cheated in multiple fights. I mean, he was holding my grub tonight against the cage. In the first round, I shot a takedown, and he went bomb, bomb twice to the back of the head. And, you know, I think Dan Mergliotto is top three best refs in, in, in the game. But I told him before the fight, I wanted him, hey, do not let this guy hit me in the back of the head. And, and he did right away. If you go back and look at the footage, you know, he clearly the back of the head. And, and when you hit someone in the back of the head, man, it, it definitely dazes you real quick. So, you know, that caught me off guard. And, and, you know, just more tactics of him cheating. You'll never see me cheating or, you know, trying try to cheat. So it's just got an unfair shake again. But, you know, I still thought I got the job done. But I promise you, you ain't seen the last of me. Colby, 20 years from now, when we're talking to our kids and grandkids about the greats who have participated in sports here in Madison Square Garden, what are you going to tell them what Colby Covington did on this day at MSG and how will we tell them to remember this fondly? You know, the beautiful thing about you know, my performance and my body of work is I'm not the one that has to tell them. You know, they can go look at the footage, they can go look at the tapes, they can look at everything that I've done, my accomplishments and the way I fought. I put it all out there every single time. There's no quitting me. You cannot get me out of that octagon. There's not a person that can finish me on this roster. So, you know, I think the kids will, will see that, you know, he was a kid who was unbreakable and he just kept coming forward. You know, a kid from Thurston, Oregon, never had no quitting him. And, he fought for a bigger purpose than himself, law enforcement, military, the people that keep us free and, and protect our freedoms here in America. So I'm going to keep fighting for them. This is bigger than me now. Tonight you used Kurt Angle's old theme in the WWF, and uh, you seemed to get a kick out of the, uh, the chant that people were associating with that theme song. Uh, what was going through your mind when they were chanting that, man? Man, every time I hear the crowd saying, you suck, it's, it's such a freaking humbling experience. It's just... It's beautiful. I, I love it. You know, it just 
they're playing right into my game. You know, I have everybody right where I want them. They're in my trap, in my web, and it's, it's just beautiful, you know. I would never have used that song if I didn't, you know, personally ask Kurt Angle, and he gave me permission to use that song, and, you know, just to recreate these moments and, and get the crowd into the show. They, they were a part of the show tonight, you know. They were screaming. You know, some of them loved me, some of them hated me, but they were entertaining, and they got their money's worth tonight, and that's what it's all about here at the UFC is, is giving the fans, you know, they're a show for what they're paying for. They're paying their hard-earned money for this. So it was amazing. Loved it. Last question for you, Eric. You used Kurt Angle's team before. You used Hulk Hogan's team before. I know you like that wrestling. What, what's next for you? What's the next team you're going to use from the wrestling tree? Because they got some good ones out there, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm the, I'm the king of spoilers and surprises, but I, I can't be revealing that yet. you, you got to tune in to see. You know, I definitely got some surprises in the store and some beautiful things that – I have planned for the future and, and future events, but I can't reveal them here. It, it's like watching the beginning of a movie. You don't get to see the end. You gotta pay attention to see the end. Kobe, back here. You had said all week, to your right, you had said all week that you were not gonna shake his hand, and at the end there, we actually saw the two of you embrace and actually shake hands, show the uh, sign of sportsmanship. Talk a little bit about the conversation that you had in there with Usman, because he actually mentioned it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's, he, you know, there was a little bit of respect for each other, you know. Even though he's cut corners and I've never had to cut corners in my career, I, I came here the long way. I earned this blood, sweat, and tears the hard way. I never, never cheated, never, never cut corners. I'm just a blue collar kid from Thurston, Oregon, you know, in these big fights. So, you know, that's if that's the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. You know, I just put on two epic fights with him and beat him in multiple rounds. So where does that put me? And why am I not in the pound for pound rankings? Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Everybody hates me. I'll be to you right over here. We were just mentioning uh, some wrestling, and a lot of your old ATT buddies are doing some stuff in AEW these days. Do you have any, uh, you know, aspirations of following in their footsteps? Maybe going into the AEW ring. I don't pay attention to anything those losers do. So, you know, I'm focused on putting on the biggest and best fights in the world. You might see me at WWE one day, but you know I don't think you're gonna see me in a second tier promotion like AEW. Thanks.